Well, let's start where we left off, which was somewhere else. Oh, right. We were talking about bugs. Back before there were OSs and there were no tangible rewards for CR4, there was a bug with a phoenix where if you saved it as a favorite, you could produce as many of them as you wanted. You couldn't produce the ammo, however, so that somewhat limited its usefulness. I know this is going back a bit into the past, but this was something that made it into the live game and wasn't fixed during the beta tests. A slightly longer-lived bug was something that we named cricketing. Aircraft have the ability to land at a percentage of their maximum move speed. They also used to jump around violently whenever you used the afterburner. The bug occurred when you landed while still moving and just before touching down you hit your afterburns. This would cause the vehicle to land but to bug out and bounce up into the air really high sometimes. The aircraft would come back down and take no fall damage as the game considered it a landed vehicle and thus had no speed. Because the game was not thinking you were moving, you could get out of your aircraft midair and it would stay there. If you were really fast, you could jump out and then get back in before you fell to the ground. We abused the no fall damage by going to Sertion and jumping off cliffs like glorious winged lemmings. Since the aircraft moves forward after landing, you could get it to move onto a slanted ground and fall over the cliffs, sliding down the hill without taking any damage. It was through this method that I managed to get a low star to go negative 150 kph. We called this sledding, and I simply must share with you my most epic experience while doing this. By the Forest Trail Warp Gate on Sertion in the southeast, there are two cliffs. I was having fun falling down the side of one cliff, going several hundred kph and sliding all over the place on impact. After dropping off the first cliff, I sped to the second and my mossy managed to hit well, this piece of terrain that made a perfect ramp. It launched me flying into the air and onto the second story rail of a nearby watchtower. My mosquito proceeded to grind sideways along the rail until it flew off the other end and skidded to a halt a short distance away. It took me several seconds to regain the ability to speak. There's another weird thing you could do. If you were in sank and cricketed on top of the VR buildings, the aircraft would clip through the roof and you could get into the room behind the pop-up menu. There's nothing back there, but it's still cool to check out, like one of those roadside attractions on uh, one of your generic road trips. This bug was eventually fixed when I did the stupid, stupid thing of telling a CSR during a playtest. Yeah, I know, I'll never do that again. This next bug really wasn't much of one, but was an extrapolation on the knowledge we gained about how unmanned vehicles interact with each other during collisions. Normally, vehicles will try to stay flat on the ground. However, if you get out of a tilted vehicle, it maintains the angle. So what if you put a router against a wall at an angle and had a vehicle run into its edge pushing the router up? The router would maintain its angle and get close to the top of the base wall. But why would you ever want to do this in the first place? Well, our idea was to create a siege ramp up to the top of the outer wall. In the end, we gave up on the idea, leaving the work unfinished due to lack of need and setup difficulty. However, I do believe you managed to get one working version underneath lab conditions. Next bug! Back once again to the good old router. What can't it do? Anyway, back in the days before they fixed this, you could place a pad so it clipped into a capital shield and then teleport through into the capital. We used to go and secure capitals and drain them for fun. You still can't hack a neutral capital without the needed two subcapital links, but for some reason you can man the wall turrets. I remember a friend and I pretending we were both empty turrets until the enemy got close enough they couldn't run away. There's more router fun to be had in the sanctuary. At the observation deck, you can plant a pad either on the glass or between the lockers. Placing it on the glass lets you through into the heart shuttle room. The one time we did this, we managed to work our way up and into the tubes leading onto the shuttle. Due to how things work, the floor for the tubes is always there, visible or not. If placed in the lockers, you can get underneath the heart's floor, or fall to your death. You can get into the loading hall this way when the heart isn't there, as when you jump, it resolves your collision detection by forcing you through the floor. We had some fun with this by placing a router pad inside the heart loading tunnel and watching people get teleported outside when they try to get in. There's a side effect of doing this, however, if you actually get onto the heart. If you choose to get off the heart, your character will appear and act as normal. On other people's screens, however, you will seem to be standing just outside the heart door as if you just got off. This means you're totally invisible to other players, able to open doors like some sort of mildly annoying poltergeist. However, as this is limited only to sanctuary, it's not terribly useful. Finally, there's one more thing I have that might interest you. No, it's not about the outfit I made that was essentially mimicking the Spanish Inquisition. That's a different story. This last tidbit comes from the test server. There's this unused grenade called the Minesweeper. From what I know, some dev produced one, gave it to some guy, and he made a bunch through favorites and then handed them out. I was lucky enough to get my hands on a bunch, and I can tell you that despite the name, they do absolutely nothing. It kind of irks me that they have this fully modeled weapon and are choosing not to use it, but it's understandable. Its function was probably wrapped into the jammer grenade, making it obsolete. Well, this is it. Thank you all for your comments and support both in-game and out. I apologize for the delays in the later videos. What was supposed to occur over a matter of weeks has ended up taking roughly a year. It's been a pleasure to fight with you guys and made the coffee pot watch over you.